Hi YouTube, Studog here. Welcome back to some more funniest fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Today is going to be episode 5, and yeah, it's been like, I think, two months since I did episode 4, but I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to find some, some good cards to talk about, but anyway, I got some, some new ones for you guys today, so anyway, sit back, relax, and enjoy the funniest fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Here we go. So our first one we're going to be talking about... Let's go. More to cry. So, activate only when you lose more than 4,000 life points in one turn. Make your opponent cry and make them lose 4,000 instead. And then increase yours by 4,000. So, technically, it's a neg 1. So, it's not super powerful. But anyway, it can it can definitely, you know, put in work. So, we got a picture of uh, Mordecai from regular show who's just who's not looking that happy, <laughs> in my opinion. But anyway, it, uh, I don't know. I could I could technically see some people teching this card in. I don't really think it's that amazing. Well, it is good. I mean, if you lose four thousand light points, I mean, it can just well burn. Would obviously just play this card. This is just yeah. This would probably get banned because of burn. Like, all you have to do is lose more than four thousand light points in one turn. Activate this card like in the end phase, and then you gain four thousand, and then your opponent loses four thousand. And if they're like below like four thousand, then you win. So I yeah, I could, I had this this card would probably get banned just because burn can abuse it just so well. But anyway, yeah, just a little bit too overpowered. I mean, if it wasn't for burn, I mean maybe I could see some people using this. But I mean, anyway, that's more to cry for you. Going on to our next card, we got old school time. So we got a picture of Professor Oak saying, "Back in my day, there's only a hundred and fifty Pokemon." And now we get all this new stuff from X and Y, and there's like freaking 500 plus Pokemon out, and it's like, yeah, really hard to keep track of, but... Anyway, it's effects read. As long as this card remains face upon the field, no one can ex no one can Synchro, Exceed, or Pendulum Summon. And you can also summon any monsters with zero tributes. So basically, it just takes you back to Battle City times, where Synchros don't exist, Pendulums don't exist, Exceeds don't exist... And, you know, you get to summon blue eyes without tributing, so I, I think the old school players would love this card. They would pick up, like, a play set, and it could really shut down just a lot of decks, because, you know, a lot of the decks, like Satellar Knights and Gear Gear, they have to freaking exceed summon, you know, other synchro-reliant decks, like, I don't know, Doppel Plants and you say Fudo Dot decks. I mean, obviously, they would just... They would just scoop to this card. This card is way too good. It just shuts down all the three, the main three, just cool ways of summoning in the game right now, you know, and at the same time you can summon stuff like Obelisk the Tormentor for zero tributes and just, uh, just doesn't really seem that, that fair, but anyway, that's, that's old school times for you, so the old school players, they, they would love this card, so anyway, going on to our next card, we got Overpriced Ripoff Family Guy shirt, so, <laughs> it's a three, it's, a, it's an eight star monster, that says, the ripoff, I'd love to stay in chat, but you're a total idiot, a ripoff, avoid Macy's. <laughs> so anyway, this guy is, kind of, the guy who made this card was pretty salty that he had to get a shirt, a Family Guy shirt for twenty seven ninety nine, which I do admit, that's way too much money for a god dang Family Guy shirt. There's no way, I wouldn't even pay like $15 for that, that's just a ripoff, but anyway... Yeah, this guy just really salty about his overpriced ripoff Family Guy shirt that he bought at Macy's, like, I guess last weekend or something, but anyway, I'm not going to lie that, the shirt's pretty nice, I wish I had a shirt that good, but anyway, yeah, if me too, I, I wouldn't have paid $28, I mean, that's not even counting tax, so I mean, if you count tax, that was probably like a good old, like, close to $30 just for a shirt, which is really not that worth it, but anyway, yeah, go down to the next card, we got COOKIES! <laughs> Cookies, cookies. <laughs> so it's a level three monster. It says when this card is summoned, it turns all your opponent's monsters into delicious cookies. Zero attack and zero defense. And then once per turn, you can pay a thousand life points to take control of one of your opponent's cookies and eat it. So I mean, for a for a small price of a thousand life points, you get to you know eat cookies in the middle of your Yu-Gi-Oh match. So that'd be that'd be really fun. And, you know, basically it's kind of like a tribe-infecting virus. Just when it's summoned, or it's kind of like a dark dust spirit, because when it's summoned, it turns all your opponent's monsters. It doesn't even target just all into these pathetic little cookies. Like, I know there's this there's this card in Hearthstone that turns your opponent's monster into, like, or your opponent's minion into a 1-1 a goat or something like that. And it's just it's really funny how 
just when you summon this card, just bam, there goes all your opponent's cards. Like, they could have the most best stuff ever that says, oh, this card can't be targeted and has the most broken effects, but no, just summon just summon Cookie Monster here, and he he could just take care of the job for you. But anyway, yeah, this would, this would be a really good side deck card. I, I could see a lot of people playing this, and actually, I don't think it's that overpowered. I mean, I mean, compared to the other stuff we've had here, this card really isn't, you know, super, super overpowered. I mean, it's good, but it's not super, super, super overpowered, like, the other, you know, a couple of cards we've went over. But anyway, going on to our next card, we got Welcome to the Shadow Realm. It's a counter trap that stars, says, Sorry, Bin Laden, I'm, I'm sending you to the Shadow Realm. So, apparently, Obama, man, he's been he's been playing that Yu-Gi-Oh lately. But anyway, so it says, When your opponent goes plus three or more in one turn, you can activate this card and send them to the Shadow Realm for eternity. So, yeah, this card probably wouldn't, Illegal, because I mean, from from watching the show, the Shadow Realm really wasn't that fun of a fun of a play. Actually, it wasn't a good place at all. But I mean, if your opponent, it, it, this could have been really good in Dragon Ruler format or Spellbook of Judgment format, or actually that was the same exact format. But you know, again, Spellbook of Judgment is like, oh, I play Spellbook of Judgment, go like plus five. Nope, I activate Welcome to the Shadow Realm, and you go to the Shadow Realm forever, and I guess I win. So I mean, uh, this card would. I mean, I guess it would put some more balance into the game, but I mean, whatever, it's really not that fair, just my opinion. But anyway, I thought the the artwork was, was pretty funny. So, anyway, we're going on to our next card. We got Dueling Network Noob. So, it has a guy who used the old the anti-sportsmanship spirit button because his opponent was playing Infernities, and it has point zero zero one attack. And then a good old 69 defense. And apparently it was made in 1944, which I didn't even know Yu-Gi-Oh was out back then. But anyway, when this card is summoned, you automatically rage quit and quit Yu-Gi-Oh forever. So, <laughs> I don't know why you'll ever play this card, but, I mean, whatever. I mean, if you want to give away free wins, there you go. But anyway, I mean, that's pretty much what Dueling Network noobs are. They just can't accept the fact on how the game's played and just rage quit and quit the game, but I mean, anyway, that's, you know, one of the reasons why they got rid of the, the anti-sportsmanship spirit button on Dueling Network, just because too many people were abusing it, and it was really not that fair. So anyway, I think going on to our last card here, we got Fascism, um, which is apparently spelled wrong from the picture, but anyway, it says, continuous spell card, it says, as long as this card remains face up on the field, you look at your opponent's hand and control every move they do. And it has a little sign saying, Warning, Fascism, Free Thinking is strictly prohibited. So, I mean, again, this would be really nice. It's kind of like the Eye of Truth, but better, because I know the Eye of Truth, you know, you, you both get to see your opponent's hand. But, I mean, this card is just, you get to see your hand, and you get to do their plays for them. So, you're like, oh, no, I, I'll, I'll play for you. You don't have to play. So, you can just make it so that, that, that you'll win, you know. So, not really that fair at all. So, that's this episode of whatever it's called, the Funniest Fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards, episode five. I don't know how many more of these I'm gonna do until I officially quit this segment. But anyway, I didn't really know what video to do um, today, so I mean, I was like, okay, let's just do another episode of this. So I mean, who knows? You'll probably get these, you know, maybe once a month or something like that. But if you want more, just comment below, and maybe I can find some more cards. But I mean, some of these are just really hard to find. But anyway, hope you guys got some entertainment out of this. And until next time, this is Stu Dog signing out.